Hi, and welcome back to Raven Street Dance Studio. This is part three of our extension to moccasins tutorial. We have allowed the moccasin tops to dry thoroughly, and um, because of the way that we stretched the hide in the previous portion of the tutorial, it has dried rather nicely. It's really flat, and it's kept its shape. And uh, we got it fairly clean, except for a few trouble spots. There are a couple of ways that you can um, cover up those spots. You can use bias tape like we talked about earlier. You can add a second row of beadwork if you're actually making them larger. Um, even a row of rhinestones. With this particular order, the um, customer decided that they wanted to go on um, the fastest and cheapest way of extending the moccasins. So we will not be adding a row of rhinestones or... Um, bias tape at this time because bias tape actually it is a a nice fix but it doesn't last very long because it is on the outside of the moccasin it gets uh, rubbed and very dirty and so you'd have to take the moccasin completely apart to replace that so it's up to you whether you'd like to use it it does work but if you are going to be dancing a lot and outside I would not recommend it so now that we are ready to um draw out our sole, we have a foot pattern. We drew it on an old flyer, to be honest. Uh, it's a thick paper that won't tear like your regular notebook paper. And so then you can keep this pattern for, you know, maybe a future project. We make a lot of moccasins here at the studio. And so it is best when making not just foot patterns, but design patterns as well to use thicker paper. Paper like this, that's thin, it's not gonna keep its shape. It's gonna tear, and if you're trying to trace around it, it's really a hard thing to do. So I do recommend taking the extra step of drawing your designs on thick paper. Lots of times I'll draw the design on paper and then I will spray glue to the back of the design and put it on leftover uh, cardboard. Cereal boxes work great, and then that way you can keep the design forever. I've even seen some artists use stencils of these kind for their designs or for their moccasin top patterns. That's, uh, that's taking it to the next level, but I have seen it. Now I'm going to talk about the different types of soles. We have Latigo. This is nice and thick. These come already pre-cut and they come in pairs. You can buy them at Dancing Bear or at Red Eye Supply. They go for around $20. This is heavy duty. This is gonna last you. However, you will need to use an awl and sinew to attach these type of soles to the moccasin tops. This is gonna be your lasting sole. However, it is gonna be hard and time consuming. If you're um, pressed for time, I do not recommend because you're gonna have to sew, sew it by hand. The traditional way of sewing up moccasins is with a, a strip of leather in between the sole and the actual top. It uh, serves as a barrier. It protects the uh, stitches that you have created with the sinew, and um, they would even hang off the back um, originally for you know little tassels or to cover their tracks. These days, it's all up to you, and honestly, it varies according to your outfit and to your outfit needs. This order, is going to be a fast fix. And they realized that their moccasins were too tight the day before the powwow, and so we don't have time to um, attach the thick latigo soles. So therefore, I've gone with a much thinner sole. This is actually left over from, um, I think it was the uh, lining to a vehicle. And so someone passed it on to me if I needed it, and I've actually put it to a lot of use. It is on the thin side. It has two different textures. However, today, because we are pressed for time, we're, I'm gonna show you how to attach the top to the sole using a sewing machine. This is very fast, and um, it's not gonna last very long before you're gonna rub holes in these soles. So you could double up and uh, to put two layers together, but the more layers, the harder it is on your machine. And if you don't have a leather machine, then it could throw off your timing, it could break your needle, and it could damage your machine to when you take it back to regular sewing projects. So be careful how many layers that you're, you're taking through your machine 
when you um, decide on what type of souls you're going to attach. The last kind of souls that um, I've worked with is, uh, it's like belt leather. It's more flexible than the Latigo, but as you can see, it has the same thickness. It is easier to um, work your needle through. You still will need an awl, so it's the same amount of work. It has more of a flexibility to the sole. So I would prefer these actually than the Latigo because honestly, when you're using the Latigo, if they get wet a lot, it gets warped and then it can lose its shape. Your moccasin can not sit quite right and you'll have to re-wet it and work with it. So as thick and sturdy as they are, they do have you know a downside as well. It's completely up to you. If you do decide to go with a thinner leather for your sole, there is a way to um, add extra grip and uh, protection for the bottom of your moccasins. You can purchase these sheets and they're, it's like a leather and it's graded and they come in sheets. Um, I buy mine from Dancing Bear from California and you can take barge cement, which you can purchase at Tandy Leather. Barge cement is a very heavy duty glue. And I, we can't find it anywhere but at Tandy Leather. So make sure the next time you go, you pick up some for yourself because it is the best glue. It is not going to come apart. You would take this uh, graded leather piece and you cut it to the same size as your sole. Coat it with the barge cement. Actually let it sit for a few minutes and uh, set, if you, if you, if, uh, for lack of a better word, into that uh, leather bottom. When you've let it set for a minute, then come back and you're going to place it to the bottom of the sole that you've already sewn to the box, you know, to the regular sole, like one of these. It's gonna give you extra support, it's gonna give you grip, and it's gonna create, uh, you know, protection from the thin sole that you chose to go with. This is the product barge cement that we were talking about earlier. Like I said, you can buy it at your local Tandy Leather. We've tried lots of different glues and this works the best, hands down. So like I said, you apply a coating to the uh, leather grip. Let it sit for five to eight, to be honest, minutes so that it can set. Then you press it to the sole that you've already attached to your moccasins. You're going to have to work with it and make sure that it um, sticks, especially along the edges. If you see where it's not attaching very well, you can uh, pull that leather, I mean the uh, graded um, leather piece off and add another coat, let it set for five to eight minutes and then reapply. Make sure that you put your hand inside of the moccasin and press, especially along the edges because you don't want it's not dry, you know, as close to that sole as possible. We like to use these because it's lightweight and it does create a grip. It gets very slippery when you're uh, dancing on grass and in, inside powwows. All right, let's move to our next step. Now that we have chosen the type of soles we're gonna use, we took the foot pattern and we traced it onto the leather. We allowed um, at least a uh, an eighth to a quarter inch around because this pattern was to the exact, you know, to the exact uh, pattern of her foot. So because we're going to sew this moccasin to the sole using a sewing machine, we need to allow for, uh, you know, that little edge. We don't want to cut the sole exactly to her foot pattern because then it's going to be a tight fit. And especially with kids, you want to leave room. And you also want to leave a little room for some insoles because our feet are our money makers. And if you do not take care of them, then you're not making any money. And so therefore, insoles are a necessity inside of moccasins. Okay, now we are to the point where we are going to actually attach the moccasin top to the sole. There are two sides to this leather. And I have chosen to use the... Um, this side for the bottom because it's a cool color, but also because this side is a little slick. And so when you're dancing in indoor powwows, that slickness can make you slip and you definitely don't want to do that. It's totally up to you though. And match up the left side with the left footprint. 
You can tell that they're a match because of course they're curved in the same direction. Start at the toe. We've already attached the tongue. It was attached from the first time we made these. And we just start at right here in the center. We line that up. Don't worry about the rest. Get it underneath the machine. I'm using a brother. This is a simple um, basic machine. It does your straight stitch and your zigzag. But it's more heavy duty because it doesn't have all of the other stitches to um, complicate it. Honestly, I love, um, you know, the machines that have lots of stitches. But when you take a uh, machine and you add a lot of options, it seems that it makes the actual product weaker. That's just me. But I like my um, heavy duty or old school brother. I do have a leather machine, but this isn't that thick. So I'm choosing to use this one. Insert your needle so that it doesn't slide. Line it up, and you're gonna to have to constantly keep lining it, so you're only gonna be able to line it for a small section. Come in about an eighth of an inch. As you can hear, it's going through thick layers, so it is stressful on your machine, but they're not too thick, so the brother can stand it. As we make our way around the curve, you're going to have to stop and realign so the edges are the same. Take your time because you don't want to have, you know, excess hanging over the edge because that's taking away from the space inside of the moccasin once it's sewn up. I do suggest also using a heavy duty, duty needle. They actually have um, leather sewing um, needles as well. You can get those at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. Keep making your way around. Sometimes it gets hung up and you might have to roll it to get it started. If I had extra time and I, to pull out my leather um, sewing machine, I might have uh, taken the time to add the bias around. It's not that much more time into the project, and it does act, add an extra um, color there, but it does add extra layers to your machine, so make sure that you use the, the appropriate machine because it, it will damage um, a regular sewing machine. We've gotten all the way back to the back of the moccasin. This is where it gets a little hard to make it meet, but it will um, come together. Just keep sliding it so that the edges are the same. Lift your presser foot, presser foot and turn the moccasin so that it, it is going in the right direction. You're not going to sew it completely to this edge. You're going to leave a space. That's so that we can sew the back up after we've sewn the sides. Now come back to the top and you're gonna come down the other way. See how it's getting hung up? You just have to roll your uh, this wheel over on the right hand side sometimes to get it rolling once it's when it's going through um, thick layers. Ooh. I try to um, you know leave a, a little margin, but I, I try to get as close to the edge as possible. Only sew it one time around. Then fit it to the uh, person you know that's going to be wearing them to make sure that you didn't make it too small or too big. So that when you sew it the second time, 
then you, you'll know that you, you did it right. It sucks when you go ahead and, and um, you uh, sew it twice and then you fit them and then they're too tight or they're way too big. Then you have to go back and, uh, you know, adjust. And I do not like taking stitches apart. So it's best to measure twice and cut once. Make sure the needle is um, down so that you're, you're, it's not sliding off the project when you're um, adjusting and moving your fabric. We, I know this is taking a little bit, but you're making your way around. Take your time because this is definitely faster than hand sewing with the latigo soles. A lot goes into um, why you use the supplies you use and in the manner that you use. It all depends on the, the project, the customer, their budget, and your, your time. So when we originally beaded these, we knew that they were going to be extended. So it was good that uh, none of the beads broke. And when we washed it, and now that we're sewing it together, what took the most time was the drying. The actual time into um, doing this uh, extension has only been maybe half an hour. So now that we have the sole attached, you're seeing the, the shoe, the moccasin form. Now we have the back. Traditionally, we sew moccasins inside out. And like I said, we use a strip of leather that is in between the top and the sole. But... This repair is different, so. We don't have to worry with that. Now we're gonna sew up the back. Actually, before I start sewing, I did mark it. I wrapped the, the top around um, Layla's foot and I marked it just so I had a, a point of reference. And it was light mark right here. So this is where it was meeting on the back of her foot. But honestly, you have to go to what the sole print is because it has to meet and be um, flush right here along the back. So turn it inside out. Make sure you're not too far off the mark that you, that you did when you fitted the customer. Take the back two pieces and let them meet. Make sure that when you start your line, that the line is going to be as close to this back as possible. You might not get as close as you want, but we're gonna stitch it up by hand because the, the machine just won't get it, get it sometimes. You have to make sure that that back heel is sewn uh, tightly. So now, we don't wanna sew over the original laces because they're there for us to run the lace through once we're finished. Getting it started sometimes you have to work with it because it is thick layers. It's hard for it to feed on its own. So lift your presser foot, move it a little bit forward, and now it's going. We almost made it meet, and the beadwork almost meets. So now we're gonna um, sew this um, by hand with a leather needle and sinew. Okay, now that we have sewn the two layers together, we're gonna make sure that this back is closed up. You can turn it inside out to hide the stitches better. There are different um, types of sinew that you can purchase. 
I'm going to run you through, through them. It depends on the project that you're making and honestly what's available at the time. The small um, spools that you see often on stands at powwows um, that are for a quick repair, it separates and it's not the best sinew to use. Pause it. This ain't working. Okay, actually I was uh, telling you wrong. You On a different repair, you would want to hide the stitches, but we've sewn it with the stitches sh uh, showing, so we will have to sew it in the same way in the back otherwise it'll make it a buckle so we've threaded our leather needle we like glovers glovers needles are awesome they even make beading needles we use them often I should have actually used a um, smaller of a needle because it's not you know as thick as the latigo but I couldn't find one so you know we're, we're gonna make it work you can use an awl to po um, poke your holes, but because this is a worn and this is a thin leather, I'm, I'm going to stick away from that because I don't want it to um, tear through. I do recommend using pliers. Taking it easy on the hands is a must. We uh, tied a knot. It... Some people hide their knots on the inside. I do usually do that. But I'm uh, a little bit in a hurry, so it'll be okay. Loop stitch this back of the heel, making sure that it is securely um, sewn in the back. Try to keep your stitches, um, you know, along the same line. Uniform. As you become a more experienced uh, crafter, you will um, perfect your um, technique. But like I said, it just depends because sometimes you're in a hurry and you have to adjust. If you're even having problems this way and you don't have an all available, take your uh, pliers and once you've pushed the tip of the needle through the layers, use the awl to push it through. Pliers. Or pliers, sorry. I know the stitches are in the way, but we can tie them off all at one time. Plus, we're going to uh, probably sew this again. Of course we will, once we make sure that it, it fits her foot. As many pairs of moccasins that I have made, I mean, it could just be a, a, a bad day, or you could have just, uh, you know, your pin could have wavered a little, and it's just always best to make sure that it fits right before you do a second row of stitching, because it it's really hard to remove two rows of stitching as opposed to one. Like I said, there are different types of sinew, and now they even um, sell sinew rolls that um, where the sinew has already been stripped. That um, you might need a, a, a roll of each because sometimes you need a thicker um, string of sinew for the project, and sometimes you need a thinner. But I have found that. If you're stripping it and you don't give it, you know, strip it at the right um, grade, then uh, the sinew can fray. This is actually a really um, good brand right here. Okay. We're almost finished. Go a couple more loops past your stitching just to make sure because let's say your thread breaks, then um, you have uh, you know a couple of more rows and you don't get a blowout. Ooh. Whoops. 
I didn't double the sinew. I just um, used one one uh, layer, I guess you would call it, or one strand. But you can double it. Totally up to you. It's getting hung on the layers. Hmm. All right, we're good to go. Go ahead and loop it once more and take your needle through the circle, the loop, and pull. This string is because now it's become, uh, it's become doubled. We'll leave it because it's just extra, it's, it's fine. tying the knot and we do I do it twice at least you can cut it now after we uh, knotted it twice we're gonna do it again because this extra strings hanging there just tie a double knot now you can cut the extra sinew off. Then we take a lighter and we burn that knot and when you burn it with sinew it has a wax so lick your finger and then press it to the sinew and it creates a seal. You may have to do this again and press. So now it's not bulging out and it's, it's sealed. Go back and make sure that you do the same for the original knot. It honestly wasn't very smart for me to put the knot on the outside and on the bottom because you will be dancing on it and that puts it in risk of uh, breaking. But you uh, learn as you go and if it does have a blowout, then you'll just bring it back over here to the studio and we'll repair it again. Oh, okay. You can see the stitching here on the bottom. To protect those stitches, that's why it's even more, even more so important to use this um, leather graded sheet. Not only does the rubber uh, sheet provide you with traction and then extra support, but it also protects the stitches in this case because the stitches are on the bottom of the sole and they will be rubbing against the ground and rocks as you're walking to and from and during the power. With these moccasins, the stitches, stitches are here. And so then uh, that's why uh, on the old school moccasins, originally they would put a strip in between that would protect the stitches. But it's up to the, the crafter. All right, we're gonna tie off these uh, strings from the sewing machine and we are almost finished. We have kept our laces from the first time that we made uh, these moccasins and we're just gonna re-thread them through. If they're too dirty or you know damaged, go ahead and cut some new laces if you like. Some people don't even use laces, I don't. The reason for that is because I, I used to use laces but then there were times where they came undone and there's nothing worse than you know part of your outfit coming untied while you're dancing, especially your moccasins. So, then there were lots of times I would tie them way too tight and it would cut off my circulation. So, I honestly use hockey tape. You can get it at Red Eye Supply or your local sports store. And it is a clear, um, it's an awesome tape. It's clear, it doesn't um, slide and slip and it does not leave a residue like, the like duct tape does. And Red Eye Supply is the only booth at Powell's that carries hockey tape. You can find them on Facebook or at your local powwow. Okay, so now that our strings are all tied, oh, we have one more. I do tie my strings. It is uh, time consuming, but it, it saves you in the long run because 
stitches will come undone, especially on moccasins. When you're putting your foot in and out of here, this gets a lot of wear and tear. A lot of stress. So I tie my strings, even though we used regular, uh, you know, sewing thread, which is not a heavy du duty thread, it's still what you have used to secure the project. Like I said, I will run another stitch around once I make sure that the that this moccasin fits her, you know, and uh, fits her foot in a good way. Now um, we could cut this excess leather that's on the inside. I choose not to do this when uh, making children's moccasins because um, I've gotten into a routine that I'm gonna probably ex extend them or you want that option to be there. If you cut this excess off, you restrict yourself from extending it later. Since this has been uh, extended now, I highly doubt that we're going to extend it again. However, until we actually do the final fitting, I will wait to cut the excess leather that's on the inside here. And you never know, as, as well as they, uh, they stood up, the beadwork stood up, we could uh, extend these again and add an extra row. So just don't limit yourself as far as your options. That's what happened. Okay, while we have the lighter handy, go ahead and uh, go around your moccasin and any frays or uh, strings that are out, go ahead and run your lighter. Be careful not to hold the flame to the project for too long because you would hate to damage it. That has happened to me before. But a lighter is great for sealing threads. Now we're going to run the lace back through. Start with the tongue hole first. You want this um, edge here to be held in with the lace, so come to the outside of it and weave your lace in and out. Honestly, right here, you would probably want to add an extra hole so that at the heel part, the lace would be on the outside and it's not going over this uh, extra that's in here. I think that I, I'm going to change it, take it back out. This is a live recording. And so sometimes you have to take it out and you see a better way to do it. This is reality TV here. Start from the back, I guess. And weave. Like I said, I don't use laces, so this 